Podcast Live. I'm your host, Raphael, alongside Michael. As usual, we are in Vancouver and Toronto, and we've got another great special guest with us today, Mr. Matt Adams from the Golf Channel, best-selling author, and also from Fairways of Life. Welcome to the show, Matt. Good to be back with you guys. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks for coming back again, Matt. A lot going on in golf, and it's always fantastic to hear your insights on it. Thank you. Well, you know, I'm pretty excited to announce that you could watch Fairways of Life with Matt Adams every Monday through Wednesday at 8 a.m. on the Golf Channel, on YouTube, on all of these platforms. You know, when I go through the list of uh, different platforms you guys are on, it's, it's ridiculous. I was uh, out in uh, South Carolina recently and uh, I was watching it on Bailey's television. There you were. And uh, pretty great <laughs> to see you all over the place like that. Yeah, you know, the... That particular show that you're watching is because we have the daily live show that you mentioned, which is Golf Channel. And we also distribute on our YouTube uh, platform, the Fairways of Life channel there. But the show that I think you saw up in the Northwest was our nationally syndicated weekend show, which we have our mm -hmm. own affiliate network. And, you know, for, for people that are listening or watching this podcast or thinking about their own, the real secret in the industry that nobody tells you, but the real true secret is, is that you develop your own system of distribution because the power and the money in the industry is in distribution. It's not in content generation, because if you look at guys like you, Raph, and you, Michael, where you guys are generating content, if you can figure out how to distribute the content and continue to produce good content on top of that, that's where the real power lies. That's the real secret. And I find that a lot of people that are interested in doing content, being a host or what have you, they don't truly understand the business dynamic. Their, their thought is, well, I'm going to come in. I'm going to regale you with my raging glory. Uh, you know, I'll be paid handsomely for it. And then I'll, <laughs> I'll hop on my horse and ride out to another town. Uh, that's not really how it works. I find that the way to succeed in this industry has a lot more to do with tenacity than it has with talent, uh, with all due respect. I've always had the philosophy that, you know, the people I want to compete against are the most talented people in the world. I want the most talented people to be the ones that I have to go up against because by and large, I find that talent uh, relies upon that and they tend to be somewhat lazy. Uh, whereas I look at a, a person like myself and I go, I don't really feel like I have any talent at all. But what I am proud of is the fact that I keep my head down. I keep grinding away. So that to me is the real secret. That's the real dynamic for anybody that's out there that's wondering how to do it, that, to, how to get to a point where their career is is doing what we're doing right now. That's really how you do it. Some sound advice, Matt. Uh, you, you've definitely... Um... You seem to outwork a lot of people in, in this sector because you're you're out there. You 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 do trips. Uh, you're all over the Golf Channel. Uh, you 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 definitely put the time in. So uh, you know the fruit of your labors. You know definitely coming out. So good, good work to you. Thank We're you. on episode eighty-seven. So nice. uh, we, we put we put in quite a few a few episodes since we last talked, as well as the fact that let's kind of pivot and talk about distribution for maybe live live golf is now available on youtube i'm really happy they made that move you know it's a little bit better for distribution as far as people watching whenever they want they could watch it live and i was really disappointed in the, the past year where i was not able to watch it on youtube so now that's very cool your thoughts on that final in vegas i thought it was quite Tremendous. I thought that the playoff, uh, the, it getting dark, Sergio going back with Neiman to that hole and that uh, scoreboard lighting up the 18th hole and him hitting that shot by the bunker all being lit up. It was quite dramatic. Yeah. Well, I mean, when Joaquin opened with a 59 in that particular event, but I just want to back up for a second and, and talk about uh, the finding live and where you can find it and all the rest. Uh, I had Casey Alexander on the show this week, who, who is a world renowned analyst in one of the areas that he happens to be an expert is a golf industry, believe it or not. And I was talking to him about the mentality, particularly of a sovereign fund and how you move forward. I was comparing that to the SSG infusion of money coming into the PGA tour. And he said something to me that I hadn't heard the phrase before, but I thought it was fascinating. And he said, well, it's a difference in time horizons. 
And what mm. he meant by that was, is that usually when you look at VC, venture capital coming out of North America, venture capital in North America tends to be looking at a window of say three to five to seven years, and they expect a return on the investment that they made. And they, they generally expect a pretty stout investment on what they made. VC tends to invest in heavily, obviously technology, but if they're going to invest in industry, lots of times they go in and they want to make that industry more efficient. They want to lean it out in order to secure that return. And what he was explaining to me is that a mentality like a sovereign fund would look at funding something. It's not in a three-year or a five-year or a seven-year return. It could be in a 20-year or a 30-year return. It could be from a mindset where this isn't just about like, oh, how much money am I going to make for the investment that I just made? And when is it going to come through? It's about how much money my grandchildren could make yeah. when the investment comes to fruition. So I've noticed lately there's a lot of people, and I realize that, that on the issue of that, there's a lot of people that have a side to take one way or the other. My personal philosophy on all of this is I, I absolutely love golf and I look at it as a buffet. And I like mm. to say, hey, maybe there's something on the buffet that you think is rancid that someone else thinks is the most delicious thing they've ever consumed in their entire life. So my attitude pretty much is let the people consume what they want to consume. It's a buffet. Right. Mm -hmm. Eat as much as you want. So from that standpoint, I think when people start to look at and do comparisons and say, well, look where Liv is now in terms of their ratings compared to where the PGA Tour is now in terms of their ratings. The PGA Tour as an entity, as we now know it, was created some, give it 55 years ago. Liv is in what? The third season? Yeah. So yeah. you have to give things time to grow and find their audience and find their footing and I don't think now is the time, if you're a live fan, to panic about where the ratings are, nor is now the time on the other side, the people who might hate live to be crowing about the difference in ratings because it's a long-term game, not a short-term game, but what it is in the interim is a game. So enjoy it for that. Uh, it's good perspective. And, and like live has come a long way since day one, tournament one, you know, there's noticeable improvement in their production value. Uh, you know, it's, I've been to an event. It, it was fun. I've been to the second event at Pumpkin Ridge and it was fun. It was, it surpassed my expectations, uh, immensely. And, uh, you know, I, I had a good time with it. Um, what I did love about it was it's on YouTube and, and you know, to reference your distribution point, um, you know, I think YouTube is an underutilized resource for, you know, for, uh, in golf, and it would be great to see more of it happening there. Uh, just Good. because the young generation are all over it. You know, we all grew up with cable. We're used to watching you know, sports uh, on TV, uh, but but YouTube is it, it's it, it's underserved. So I'd like to see more of that from all the tours. Matt, you were one of the Matt, you were one of the first ones to talk about live. Uh, and give your opinion on both sides. And it's so great to see. And that's where we stood from the beginning of this podcast just over two years ago. We're, we love the PGA Tour, but we love watching Live Golf. There's so many great characters that they actually you know, cherry picked out of the tour, people who have followers, people who are, have great personalities, and uh, they were able to capitalize on that. And you talked also about generational money. That's sort of a new term uh, in the golf industry, but you know they are getting paid quite a bit, and it doesn't mean that the golf is going to be played at any less of a rate. They're going to play their very best. You can see how passionate they are, and if you've watched any broadcast or have gone to any event, you'd certainly notice that there is a lot of great play, practice, and passion behind what they do. This is what they do for a living. Well, you know, I look at it the same way as you would anybody else that has started to make substantial money because of what they do. I don't think that, I mean, I've seen Paul McCartney multiple times. A couple of years ago, I went and saw the Rolling Stones again. I don't think Frank Sinatra in his heyday or Bruce Springsteen in his most recent tour sing with any less passion than they did back in the days when they had no money to when now they're absolutely raking it in because of the superstars that they are. These are people who are incredibly, incredibly talented. Uh, my my editorial perspective when we had these two leagues that were uh, emerging was that it's not my job to tell people what to think. And I realize that that's kind of unusual 
in the, the golf world that we live in today that, that golf media feels as though it is their responsibility or, or compulsion to tell people how they should feel about things, how they should think. I'm happy to give my opinion if someone wants to know it, but I don't particularly feel like mine has any more weight than anybody else that's out there watching wherever they are around the world. Instead, I feel like my job is to provide facts. Here's what happened, here's how it went down. How you interpret those facts and what conclusion you come to in your mind and heart is up to you. So it's a, it's a particular dynamic and, and as, you, as you were just alluding to there, Raf, I think right now it's, it's somewhat unique because for whatever reason, people feel compelled to pick a side. I don't. At the end of the day, it, it's golf. We all love golf and it's the evolution. So, you know, any business has to evolve. And, and right now we're, we're, we're kind of caught in the crosshairs uh, uh, of the evolution of the sport. I think in the end, it will golf will still be here. We're still going to want to oh, watch yeah. it. Uh, these live guys will probably will come back. Look at like Rory's changing his tune. Everyone's changing their tune on what they said a year ago. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be okay. And, you know, it is a shame to see that like the live field. It's got a lot of great players, a lot of the great characters that we all know, and they're over there, but you know, um, we're going to see them again. You know, they'll be in the majors. They'll come back, you know, just give it some time. Let, let all the dust settle from, from this and, and we're, and the sport will survive and probably thrive. Yeah. The one thing that I'm a hundred percent convinced of is that golf will be okay. Uh, mm -hmm. You just said the dust mm -hmm. will settle, but I think the game's going to come back together because the game needs to come back together. Even people who have a strong opinion on one side or the other, by and large, they agree that the game is better when we have an opportunity to see, see great players come together in whatever format that makes. It may be a situation where it's a team series where we see it enlarged and when they come in yeah. from from multiple tours, or maybe it's these heightened events. They're now called signature events on the PGA tour. Maybe they'll use that name or another name where again, the world of golf from these various tours come in and we see them compete. It won't be to the level of a major. The majors are still always going to be the majors, but it could be, and would be something very, very special if we saw that. So yeah, I, I share your enthusiasm and, and, I, and your commitment to that. And I, and I also think that golf ultimately has always been about one thing, and that's hope. Mm -hmm. Hope for a better round, hope for a better shot, hope that this is going to go in the hole, whatever it is, it's always defined by its currency is hope. And so with all that, I think everybody, ultimately, their heart is in the right place where they want what's best for the game. And I think what's best for the game is that it will come back together. It just may, may take some time. Time, that reference could be a matter of months or it could be a couple of years, not sure. Mike, I love the fact that you said it's golf after all. It is golf. And a lot of the people in the media, unfortunately, are talking like it's not golf. So what are they doing? <laughs> They're playing golf, in my opinion. You and Dominic have a great kind of uh, banter back and forth. And I love what you guys do. And it's really cool because it's different perspectives. And uh, it's, it's really neat to see. I like the fact that you bring up the majors. At least everybody will come together four times a year. And, you know, on the on on the large scale looking from the outside in you have, most people only watch majors it doesn't matter what sport it is if it's the nhl playoffs major league baseball tennis most comparably right so you know you'll get to see the best players in the world four times a year uh, they've got a flagship event the players championship is always incredible and i think what would make live complete if each one of these teams actually had a home club and city, it's hard to root for individual players if they're not rooted to a certain city or a club. And I think that's the final step, in my opinion, on what's going to happen. There's been rumors about it from people we know in the industry, but we'll see if that actually takes fruition. We're just going to pivot very quickly. We want to hit Tiger Woods. Your thoughts on him playing and uh, is he going to make the cut? Is he going to withdraw? Is he going to win? <laughs> Any predictions? Uh, I wouldn't go to the last. I, I don't feel like Tiger Woods is going to win. There's something great that happens with Tiger Woods. And it's, uh, I'll be honest with you, it's comical when you watch it from the media perspective and that uh, Tiger Woods will come out to play. Tiger Woods will do a press conference. Ti they'll say to Tiger, Tiger, why are you here? And he'll say, well, I'm only here for one reason. I'm here to compete. I'm here to win. 
right. they'll say, okay, Tiger is here to win. And it will get done with the press conference. And we all do the same thing because ultimately I think we're all fans. And we all look at each other and go, you know what? I think Tiger might be able to win. I mean, he's, he's, <laughs> he's the GOAT. It, I think he can do this. And it happens before every major that he plays it and all the rest. Tiger hasn't played since before the new year. We're talking about weeks ago that we saw Tiger for the last time. And even at the PNC, he showed some flashes. It was okay. There was nothing really spectacular there. And then when Tiger gets done, say he makes the cut, doesn't make the cut, whatever it is, finishes 60th, what have you, he'll look at the media and will say to him, well, Ty Tiger, you know, coming in, you, you said you were playing great. You were, you were hitting the ball well at home. You've got that new golf ball that you're using. Everything was going well. And he'll look at him and go, come on, guys. I've gone through a zillion different surgeries. My back is fused. They just fused my ankle. What do you expect? And that kind of makes <laughs> me laugh because it was like, dude, you set up the expectations because of who you right, are. Right. And we're buying in because of what you have done. And that's really the bottom line to all of this. It is fun. So when Tiger comes out and plays again, it is fun. It is also now at a point, And I don't mean to make it sound ceremonial, but it is historic that when he tees it up, we get to see what are the greatest players, if not the, of all time hitting a golf ball again. That in and of itself is fun. And I'm for one that, you know, I knew, I remember back in the days when Jack Nicklaus said he wasn't going to be a ceremonial golfer and Tiger has said that's, that, that's not what they're all about. And I shake my head and I say to myself, you know what, go back to those names I just told you that were these great stars. Bruce Springsteen and, and Paul McCartney and the Rolling Stones. And when Frank Sinatra was alive and touring, we weren't going to see them because they sounded like what they sounded like at 25 and 35 right. and 40 years old. We're going to them because they're legends and we get to have them in our world for a few moments. So once again, this week, we get to see Tiger at the Genesis. We get to have him in our world. And whatever Tiger does, make the cut, doesn't make the cut, whatever it is, we get to see him hit golf shots again. Yeah. And in some way, we relive a little piece of each of our golfing lives. Well it said. Well, Tiger is uh, he he doesn't have that defense shield that he had up before, you know, with the blinders on. He's out to kill. He's very jovial and having a lot of fun with the other players, joking around with JT or who it may be. It's a different side of Tiger. It's really entertaining, uh, uh, and people want to see it. And you know, do I want to see him on Champions Tour? Absolutely. Give him this card yeah. if he wants it. Uh, I'll, you know, it he's going to uh, increase the crowds 20-fold on the Champions Tour just so we could go see him. Well, no to Begay, his, his close friend, told me that Tiger wants to play the Champs Tour. And Good. when I heard that, I was kind of surprised by it because we're, we're used to, whether it was Greg Norman or whether it was Jack Nicklaus again, where they kind of like shrug their shoulders a little bit and we're like, eh, Champs Tour, not sure. You know, people are slow to get on it. Like Davis Love the Third was slow to get on it. Uh, Stuart Sink more recently was slow to get on it. And why not? If you've got status mm -hmm. on the big tour and the big checks that are out there on the big tour and all the rest, I per perfectly understand it. But if Tiger wants to play on the PGA Tour champions, 100% happy about that decision. Very much looking forward to it. Like, look at Lee Trevino. You know, he's, he's in his 80s, you know, but people crowd around him at the range just to hear him talk, pick up some tips, hear some jokes. He's the best. Uh, and, and, you know, this that Tiger's got, you know, decades of that ahead on the Champions Tour. I think it's going to be super entertaining. So I, I can't hope so. wait to see it. Final question. I know we've been uh, holding on to WM Phoenix Open. Uh, our own Nick Taylor winning that event. Yeah. Uh, your, th your thoughts on the uh, ruckus and what was going on there. In my own opinion, it's going to happen at any major event, especially golf growing so much. You've got so many young people. You must have had a, quite a sheltered life to not to understand, you know, the college university lifestyle. Now it's, it's a very small percentage of people that come out and create this uh, craziness, you know, seeing guys sliding down with their shirt off down a hill, jumping into, into sand traps, uh, diving in and whatnot. But that's, you know, that's going to happen at NHL games, NFL games, MLB games. It does happen. And it's it, with that many people, it's bound to happen. Now, is it the, tournament's fault for over serving maybe maybe that could go into it but if you're going to be stupid stupid people are going to show up anyhow <laughs> yeah but well, how's that saying how stupid is as stupid does I, I my my belief is that when you're talking about a crowd in a dynamic that the the real bad apples are somewhere around one out of every 100 people 
right? So it's a tiny percentage. However, when you've got 20,000 people around one hole, that means that you've got at least 200 pretty bad apples in there. So I just said this the other day on, on Golf Channel that my feeling is, is that the PGA Tour needs more of the WM Phoenix Open, not less. The PGA Tour needs more. And golf is trying so hard to move away from the stuffy image, the penny loafer that, that it has, you know, the, the uh, playing music while you play golf and, and maybe your shirt is untucked, maybe your hat's on backwards. Who cares right. as long as people are enjoying themselves? And remember, I come from a background of golf operations. So that was my attitude on it. Was, if I'm not going to police you on what you wear or how you act. The only thing we used to ask people with their music and, their, and the carts was, please keep your mu music to a level so that someone on the hole next to you was not listening to your music. You do your right. thing with yours and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Don't infringe on in somebody else's. So as far as the WM Phoenix uh, Open goes, the WM uh, for themselves and, and the Thunderbirds for themselves and the people that have commented following, there is where I think as point one, PGA Tour needs more of an event like this. The event itself needs less of itself, meaning that they have to take a hard look at how many people they're letting through the turnstile. They have to take a hard look at alcohol sales on site. I realize that both of those that I just mentioned equate to money. They've already established themselves as the pinnacle social event in their area, which I think is awesome. And that's what I'd like to see spread in terms of this effort to continue to grow the game. I just, I just think even they have admitted that it got out of hand and they need to do more in terms of reining it in. And it wasn't just this year. It's been crazy for a number of years. And that comes down to how big is too big and how much is too much. And ultimately, even in the reference of alcohol or more, when to say when. So those are the things that I think they need to take a hard look at. I don't think they have to get rid of the core of who they are. They just have to get rid of the, get rid of the parts that have gone rotten. I agree, Matt. I saw a bartender posted uh, who was working at the event. He, he gave a little insight onto what he saw. And it looks like security was overwhelmed, too many people, um, you know, and the, if some people were getting into the private uh, areas that were unlimited booths and uh, they'll figure this stuff out, you know, whether it's more security or different access control, uh, you know, and, and it's a, it, there's a lot of younger crowd there who are drinking heavy. So, and obviously social media uh, showcases the worst uh, offenders uh, of the weekend. <laughs> so it, it, these things will get worked out and the, the pros know what's going on there. You saw Zach Johnson and Billy Horschel getting a little upset with the crowd. And if, if that's not your type of tournament, then don't sign up. You know, you know, it's going to be a little wild, and, and, you know, but I, it, it is a fun event and people travel for it. It's a huge boon for the local economy. So it's not going anywhere. Look, guys, it's not just the WM Phoenix Open either. You have to remember, you know, like in Hazeltine for the Ryder Cup, the behavior of the gallery yeah. was atrocious. And again, you look at that and go, how does that happen? Using the same percentages, just if, if you would allow those same percentages, right? The bad apple percentage. Again, you've got 15, 10,000 or more around one hole because it's coming yeah. down to, to a point of culmination. And from that standpoint, those bad apples really can start to multiply. And you have to ask yourself the question, how much is it worth the money to bring in that many people? And how much is it worth the money to sell alcohol, which is sold at a premium at events such as that? And are you willing to live with what can happen when you do that? Which to me ultimately is about safety, not only for the gallery themselves, but even for the players. And again, where I use the example that said that WM Phoenix Open, their, their issues were not just in 2024, Last year, if you remember, when they rained down on the green with the tins, with the cans of beer, that was so dangerous. And everybody talked about, gee, what if it had hit a player? And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, what if it had hit a player? But what if it had uh -huh. hit a caddy? What if it had a volunteer? What if it had hit security personnel? What if it had hit staff? What if it had hit other fans? It, there was all kinds of human beings that could have been impacted by something like that. I do think that they made amends with that. I just saw green cups this year instead of the the cans themselves, which I think is a smart move. So I think they're going to continue to, they're smart people and they're going to continue to make smart moves. But part of that move is they have to be honest with themselves. Yeah. 
Well, Matt, you've been really gracious with your time. Thanks for coming on. Uh, you know, you had a great point there. The positives also far outweigh the negatives with the charitable work and the growth of the game. You can watch Fairways of Life with Matt Adams every Monday through Wednesday at 8 a.m. Eastern time on the Golf Channel on or your favorite platform. Matt, thanks again for coming on. Raph, Michael, always good to see you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, Matt. We'll, we'll see you Bye. soon. See ya. You know, Mike, I think Matt makes a very, very good point. Uh, you know, there's so many things that can be done to this to this game that can make it better at the WM Phoenix Open uh, that I think that uh, just a few tweaks, but it's only once a year, right? It's only once a year and it's not all that bad. Did Live Golf copy that model for what they're doing? Maybe, but it's also the Ryder Cup right the team format you know they're just trying to make it a little bit more exciting and again i'm not biased towards either side i love the pga tour and i love uh, yeah. live golf I, I like the wm phoenix open i think it's uh it's a great event and sure it gets a little rowdy that's okay like we've mentioned the Ryder cups they get rowdy there's a lot of liquor sold at the Ryder cups uh people are passionate about their players and their team uh that happens happens in other sport you tell me uh, I could, you know, I, I could probably safely bet every single NFL game there's a brawl somewhere. Yep. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, yeah. There's always tailgate parties, the things of that nature, yeah. right? You know, you know, with this WM Phoenix Open uh, segment with Matt Adams was brought to you by Mike Dixon uh, from LagmasterSports.com. He's one of uh, golf top 100 instructors. Make sure you check out his uh, website and uh, follow him. Uh, check out his affiliate link and subscribe and follow amazing, amazing golf teaching tools. Um, Mike and I have uh, <laughs> can't wait to get ours in the mail, right? It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Let's not forget about Castillo Roofing. Oh, absolutely. Castillo Roofing. You know, Mike Kelly out, out in Florida is a specialist in roofing and not only for golf communities and private housing, but also golf courses. So make sure you reach out to Castillo Roofing uh, dot US. He does a fantastic job uh, in that um, I was going to say province because I'm Canadian <laughs> in that state. And so you could take a look at what he's doing. Um, take a look at the links at the bottom of our site as well. And uh, that'll give you a good idea of where to go and uh, get in touch with uh, Lagmaster and Castilla Roofing. A great partnership with both of those companies now. And uh, wonderful. Check us out uh, at our next podcast. We're going to have Rob Labritz on to talk about his journey on the Champions Tour in his third year. For Michael Bleakley, I'm Raphael Kalamat. You've been listening.